again, it's Cliff from Down Under. Um, just a quick video, Saturday morning machine maintenance time. I'm just adjusting the uh, Z uh, slideway for the minimum uh, backlash or loss motion. I'll just go through that with you. Just a quick series of clips on that subject. Hi, I'll just do a little clip on adjusting uh, backlash or loss motion. Um, I noticed my Z or Z um, was uh, getting quite a lot of uh, backlash and I was getting uh, three or four hundredths of a millimeter loss motion. So it's just so that we're talking in the same language. I mean basically um, I'll just zoom in on a dial indicator connected to uh, a flat portion near the quill. Uh, when the software is set to steps and we're coming, oh let's start off just coming so you can see it. So I'm coming down and we're in contact. So we're on steps of one hundredth of a millimeter. Okay, we're coming down one step at a time is one hundredth of a millimeter. Okay, so that's how we got it formatted. Now we're on the 40 there. I'm now going to change direction and see what the response is. So going in the other direction, I'll stop talking so you can hear it. There'll be cars going by outside, Sod's Law. You can hear that click, I presume. Nothing happened, there's no movement. So that's a loss motion of a hundredth of a millimeter. And I can see that on the DRO of the software. On the ZDRO, it moved a hundredth of a millimeter. I'll give it another one, and it moved straight away. So that means there's one hundredth of a millimeter loss motion in the Z, which is really good. That was quite a lot more than that. And I'll just go through what I did to improve it. Okay, just to summarize what I did, I removed the, uh, the Z uh, covers and then um, applied kerosene to the uh, top slideway on both sides and traversed the Z axis, the, the head up and down by the full travel several times and just kept applying the kerosene to the top portion of the slideways on the flats and on the uh, and on the dovetail ways and um, eventually um, I could start to see some debris and gum uh, uh, w working its way down through here so then I, I wiped that all off and applied more kerosene and wiped that off with tissues they came out really dirty to start with cleaned the screw by wrapping a clean rag around the ball screw and um, just kept wiping it with kerosene until I, I got it reasonably clean um, and then began to snug up the Z gib and the Z gib has um, an adjusting screw at the bottom of the gib there and at the top of the gib there. The gib is tapered obviously, it's fatter at the top so you, un you loosen the bottom adjusting screw one turn at a time and tighten the top adjusting screw until you get to the point where there's too much friction, there's too much grip and how you ascertain that is by using um, there's two different ways by using a dial indicator and measuring the loss motion so you get to a threshold where the loss motion suddenly starts to increase and that's when the gib is gripping the slideway too tight and then you just back it off about half a turn of the adjusting screw that's uh, the bottom and the top screws need to be adjusted and then tightened in the new position so that you've got the gib as tight as you can get it uh, with, with the minimum of loss motion and the other way you can do it is when you power down the uh, main power the uh, on mine anyway the uh, brake on the Z takes one or two seconds to kick in and the head begins to descend for a few millimeters and that's a good indication that the gibs not too tight if when you power down it doesn't descend at all for a few millimeters that's an indication that the gib is too tight. So those two thresholds are what I've used to get the uh, best possible adjustment. That is the gib as tight as it will go uh, without it causing any uh, clamping friction. 
just going through it quickly here so then I had the uh, loss motion down the loss steps down to about two hundredths of a millimeter by doing that I re-lubed it with the uh, slideway oil and got it down to about two hundredths of a millimeter here at the front and at the back against the uh, vertical slide so that meant that I could see from that that the head was not racking or rocking but it was going up a loss motion was just nice and clean uh, fit in the vertical so then I thought well possibly there's a little bit of backlash in the uh, vertical thrust bearings so I took that cover off up there put a pair of vice grips on the uh, drive collar and got two little c-spanners um, held a drive collar steady and just checked the uh, nuts to, to see, uh, remove the little locking tab and checked the adjusting nuts on the thrust bearings and found they were actually loose. So over the years the thrust bearings must have worn slightly. So uh, I didn't do the correct procedure and go to the trouble of removing the stepper motor. I just tweaked it down a little bit. Um, I could still feel with the power off that the thrust bearings didn't seem too tight and I tweaked up the adjusting nuts by uh, you know a small amount and then the, the locking adjusting nut and put the tag washer back in so it seems okay let's te test the backlash and it had reduced from two hundredths down to one hundredth which is great news now the, the method that I use does mean there's a risk that I have over tightened the thrust bearings and the uh, bearings are under too much pressure and will wear out rapidly but I just didn't want to take the time to remove the stepper motor and do the procedure correctly um, I've got a gut feeling that it's okay for slow speed thrust bearings to be that tight um, and I've got a lovely uh, small amount of uh, loss motion or backlash now of one hundredth of a millimeter well, let's look at the drawing in the manual of these um, opposed angular contact ball bearings and how, how the preload works. So they're held in the housing, um, clamped down on the outer bearing race by this outer uh, bush. So the outer, outer races are clamped down. The inner races are uh, on the shaft. And so this outside inner race is adjusted with these adjusting nuts. So one is an adjusting nut. Then you have a backup lock washer with a tab on it and a, uh, a, a clamp nut, if you like, a, a lock nut on that. Um, just a normal arrangement. So that adjusts putting the pressure on that sleeve onto the inner race which should be free to move enough to take up the adjustment and put the preload on the bearings. That's all pretty normal. I got an interesting uh, comment uh, under a recent video from one of you viewers talking about an issue they had with the z-axis here that the fit was too tight to allow adjustment. I'd like to hear back from you please with some more information on that. It seems to be working okay on my assembly. Um, so obviously these bearings wear out. I mean they're pretty light duty little bearings. And that, so um, I don't think I've ever adjusted this from the factory uh, because the uh, backlash or loss motion was quite small until I last checked it when it was out about four hundredths. That's uh, nearly two thou, about a thou and a half. Um, and the maximum specification according to Tourmac is one and a half thou. So it was, it was getting loose, um, and so obviously these uh, thrust bearings, if, if they were adjusted correctly from new, um, which I presume they were, had the right amount of preload, they had worn a little bit. So I guess that means that the races have worn, or the balls have worn, and um, what I've just done is tweaked it up, and um, it obviously needs that preload to keep the uh, loss motion and backlash down to a minimum. Well, that's, that's really interesting to me that those little thrust bearings have uh, worn, worn to the point where they really needed pre-tensioning again. I hadn't realized that that could happen um, just like, like that, that the adjusting screws could become loose. Um, the tab washer was stopping them from vibrating loose, so they must have actually worn, and the balls 
and the races have worn. Um, so uh, I may have over tensioned it because I've saved a bit of time and not done the correct procedure for, for putting on the preload. So uh, you know, if, if you copy that approach, it is a little bit risky. Um, the correct approach is to take the stepper motor off and then carefully measure the torque and gradually tension the preload until it's just starting to increase. Um, but you know, it's quite a cheap little bearing, so if I had to replace them again um, a little bit more quickly than otherwise, um, it's not the end of the world. I can probably just pop off the stepper motor and that housing and fit in a new set of bearings uh, with fresh grease anyway. So that's my plan. Oh, I'm really pleased with that. I mean, this old Tormac, I bought it back in 2007, and I've now got the head going up and down, the Z going up and down with only one hundredth loss motion, one hundredth of a millimeter backlash, and it's going up and down nice and straight. It's not racking around as you get on a lot of cheap Chinese mill drills. This is in another league. It's going up and down nice and straight and accurate, and it's been in use since 2007. So that's brilliant. Um, it may be that the angular contact uh, thrust ball bearings are uh, getting worn out now and they definitely needed adjusting. Um, that's interesting to me that they would wear. Um, but um, that's been tweaked up now and I've got the, the backlash down from four hundredths right down to one hundredths. And so it's still a really accurate machine. I haven't done the X and the Y uh, recently and um, that's going to be done sooner or later and I'll do a video on that if I have a chance. Um, but uh, that was really interesting. I love uh, slideways and bearings and gibs and things. So feel free to comment and um, thank you for watching. Cheers.